Hi, um, I'm being lazy. Didn't feel like getting out my microphone or doing a better setup for my tripod. So I'm just being really lazy with this first update. Hi, this is the start of the final book support group 48 hour readathon vlog. I wanted to start this at six o'clock today. It's Friday. That way I could read from six o'clock Friday to six o'clock Sunday. However, uh, it's about nine o'clock and I haven't read a single thing. As for my official TBR though, I do think I am gonna start with Nomen Omen Volume 2 by Marco Gucci. This is a three-part graphic novel series, so that'll be really easy. I can get the second one read right out of the gate. That'll kind of give me some energy to keep me going. Maybe work on my novel, which is Don't Fear the Reaper by Stephen Graham Jones, the next book and the Lake Witch trilogy. And then if I end up needing a pick-me-up, I can finish out the third of the Nomen Omen series that finishes out that entire graphic novel series fantastic. I have no idea how far I will get into Don't Fear the Reaper. It's over 400 pages. It's a horror book and I don't tend to read those super quickly. And then I have an arc of it and I obviously am going to be filming a arc reading vlog so I will need to take breaks to film updates for that also. Then it's on my phone. I don't do well with reading on my phone. I get really distracted. <sighs> I don't know. I don't like reading ebooks. I don't like that I can't see my progress. Tap the thing and then it gives me a percentage. And it's just, it's not the same as like actually seeing how much you have left in the book. In the very, very slim chance that I finish all of these, or more likely, I just get the itch to read this book. We Free the Stars by Hafsa Faisal, the second book in the Sands of Aralia duology. I only just finished We Hunt the Flame. <laughs> like, this morning. I really sucked at my reread month in December. I just, December was crazy in general, but I still want to reread this series. And I mean, it's literally two books. Technically speaking, I would be finishing out a series by doing it, even if it's a reread. Also, I'm gonna go through and annotate it and system in annotating it and better tabs this time around. I didn't care that much the first time, but now I do. As I said, I don't necessarily know if this will get picked up. It's a possibility. It probably won't be because I finished my other books. It'll more be because I can't resist continuing. Like I said, I finished the first book this morning and I spurred my best friend to reread the series as well. She told me this morning she's about at the halfway point of the first book, so if she ends up finishing it, she may tempt me into starting We Free the Stars with her. I was watching some reading sprints over on Amanda's channel at Ginger Snapped Reads. Uh, it's her birthday tomorrow, so she's celebrating. It kind of devolved into just everybody having a good time and talking. I was having a great time watching, but I need to actually get some reading done, so I had to stop myself. I'm officially going to start Nomen Omen Volume 2, which works out really well because in two minutes it'll be nine o'clock. And you know, I nine on Friday to nine on Sunday is not terrible. We'll see how this goes. Hey y'all, uh, so it's about 11 o'clock. I have finished Nomen Omen Volume 2. I realized I never really gave a synopsis for the series. I read the first one as a part of the Halloween Readathon in October. I'll put a link to my blog over here if you're interested for thoughts on it. But basically we are following our main character of Becky who one day she is out with her friends and is attacked by this man, cuts out her heart, and yet she doesn't die. Then she comes to find out that apparently in this world there are actually people who are living embodiments of literary characters throughout history. There's a ongoing theme of Celtic folklore throughout the story. The person who explains this all to her and starts to help her is actually considered kind of a villainous character from Celtic mythology. And the actual antagonist in the story is also a god from Celtic mythology. And then there are also some other characters who are from literary pieces. One of the big ones we see is Lady Macbeth. Super cool. I really like that it connects Celtic folklore with this urban fantasy story. And I was really enjoying this one. The art is absolutely beautiful. Our main character, Becky, cannot see colors. So most of the panels are in black and white, but anything that has color is magic. It was utilized a lot more in this volume and I very much enjoyed that. Particularly Becky, uh, if her magic was affecting something, it would be green. I do think the plot did get a little harder to follow in in this one. I can't really get into any specifics, but we also learned more about magic in this world. Even though I was really enjoying this, this volume got very strangely sexual. There was some nudity in the previous volume and in the early issues of this volume. Didn't mind that, it's whatever, but um, there's a magical 
cream, which I'm still hung up on. Um, didn't see that on that Celtic Gods Wikipedia page. There's a person who is being tortured and yet he is tied up in shibari. I don't know why he couldn't have just been tied to a chair and also dressed. And then finally, there is a scene that alludes to a off-page rape. Every one of these just seemed really unnecessary and out of nowhere. They each took me out of the story and I just... Also, as I said, there is this underlying theme of Celtic folklore. And while there are obviously characters from different literary stories, it did take me off guard when we are suddenly introduced to a, another antagonist character who comes from Greek mythology. Break in the pattern that you were setting up there. So I, I, I did like this second volume and I am going to finish out the series because it's literally one more volume and I mean the art itself is absolutely stunning. I would keep reading for that alone. I am intrigued to see where this is going to go and I really like the fight scenes with the art and how the coloring is done. The very end of this one is clearly leading up to the big climactic fight scene and I can't wait for it. This was definitely a downgrade from the first one. <laughs> it was, I'm still, I'm still hung up on, on it. So I'm gonna get ready for bed honestly because I'm pretty tired and I actually am gonna be doing some very early morning sprints on Ashley's Media Addictions channel. I'm gonna get in bed and I am going to start reading Don't Fear the Reaper. I have no idea how far in I'll get but I'm reading on my phone so probably not far. Good morning. So like I was saying last night, I'm doing some reading sprints. It's about 9.30. Sam woke me up at 6.30 by jumping up on my glass shelves. So that was a very fun wake up call. It's given me more reading time at least. So I'm currently at 20% into Don't Fear the Reaper and I am enjoying this. I didn't really talk about the fact that I wasn't sure if I was actually gonna continue this series whenever I read the first book. I basically accidentally requested this on NetGalley because I saw it was Stephen Graham Jones. It had a musical reference of a title. That was enough to get me interested, but turned out it was the next book in this trilogy. I liked the first book enough. I didn't really know if a sequel was necessary, but thus far I do think I'm liking it. I like the fact that the author actually gave some serious consequences to Jennifer or Jade as she's known in the first book because some very serious things happen at the end of the first book. I appreciate the fact that he actually acknowledged that and there's been about a four year time jump between the first book and this current book. We're seeing some of the characters who survived the first book and kind of learning where they are in their life now. I do appreciate that now I'm starting to get into some of the uh, cultural references obviously mostly relating to horror movies so thus far it's going pretty good um that's honestly it for now I'm kind of hungry so I got a biscuit hey friends so it is about two o'clock I got off reading sprints and you know towards the end of them I was kind of starting to fall asleep so I just lazed around for a little bit I did read further into don't fear the reaper I'm about 35 percent in and I am still enjoying this it's definitely taking this turn to possibly being more paranormal. I really like the way Graham Jones has rode the line between being paranormal and not in this series thus far. The final climax in the first book did feel like it had a supernatural element, but in this one, it seems like everything that's happening is due to a normal answer. It's just the serial killer who escaped. But there's weird situations here and there that definitely make it seem like it's something more. And now Jennifer actually spoke with this girl who also survived the climax in the first book and now is actually... She's not in a mental institution necessarily, but she is in a home and being taken care of because she is not mentally well. After talking with her, Jennifer is starting to question again whether she really did see something paranormal during that climax in the first book, whether or not that could be what's happening here again, that the girl she spoke with, Ginger, actually kind of calls out Jennifer for pushing away from the slasher obsessive character that she had created for herself in the first book. And Ginger mentions that she is now the final girl in this book. 
but we still have Jennifer or Jade and Letha from the first book. It is really hard to talk about this book without spoilers, but I am enjoying it. It's just, it's weird. It's definitely weird. I also noticed the fact that apparently a fair number of the chapters are actually names of different slasher movies, which is hilarious. I love that. I, I don't think the first book did that, but I genuinely don't remember because I read it via audio, so it could have, and I just never put two and two together. However, with this one, like reading the titles, it clicked in my brain. So it is Saturday and my usual plans follow. I am going over to Josh's. We're gonna hang out. Um, he's not feeling great and I'm doing this readathon, so we're gonna be kind of lazy. We've been working through Criminal Minds. Um, this is probably my third watch through and this is his first time. I've gotten him obsessed. We're probably just gonna watch a bunch of that. If he plays any video games, I'll get some reading done. Uh, so long time no see. I kind of sucked at reading at Josh's. But first off, I did get about hmm, to 46% in Don't Fear the Reaper. When I got over there on Saturday, Josh actually was feeling kind of under the weather. So he took a nap and I read a little bit. Then after he got up, we went and got food and basically just watched Criminal Minds for the rest of the night. Well, no, actually we took a night drive and then went and got milkshakes, which was fun and very relaxed. I didn't really get any more read. And then I was planning to read some this morning, but instead I got sucked into a webcomic. So that didn't happen. I am still at about 46% in Don't Fear the Reaper. I am enjoying it. I'm fairly certain that majority of this book is going to take place in a single night. At least that's what it seems like so far. We are still alternating between many of the different perspectives. I do think Jennifer is my favorite. I like Letha, but there's this specific scenario. Letha was just a complete idiot. <laughs> it was very difficult to read. I homegirl. If you're gonna watch a video to learn how to shoot a gun, maybe you should also watch videos about safety precautions. I will say the gory scenes are really badass though. I, I I gotta say, Graham Jones definitely knows how to write really visceral, disgusting, stomach churning scenes. On top of that, I also am really liking the essay chapters. I know that they're being written to the history teacher, but I st I'm not really sure who's writing them. I have a theory that it's this girl who survived the climax of the first book, but I don't know if it actually is her. We're kind of learning background about Dark Mill South, the murderer who may have escaped and could be responsible for this massacre that's been taking place so far. Yet they also take the time to explain the different folklore that's gone on in this area Area and the possibility of the events that are taking place being connected to something from one of those stories. Sort of similar to Jade's essays that we saw in the first book, but they're from a different person's perspective because Jennifer isn't really aware of that stuff now and she's really been trying to distance herself from it. So yeah, it's about nine o'clock, but seeing as how I've gotten zero read today and technically this is like a 48 hour readathon i'm just gonna extend it a little bit so i i think rather than trying to finish don't fear the reaper because <laughs> that's not gonna happen let's be honest here instead i think i'm just gonna go ahead and pick up nomen omen volume two no volume three try and finish that out and then hopefully i'll at least finish that series that'll make me feel like this weekend was actually productive in regards to this vlog and then i'll just film an update tomorrow So officially finally ending out this vlog. Um, so I actually did finish Nomen Omen Volume 3 last night and I thought that meant I had finished the series, but technically speaking, this isn't really an ending. It, well, it kind of is. It's an ending of Nomen Omen, but then there's a continuation of the series in a new graphic novel called Arcadia. Uh, that's kind of because of some ending events that happen. So technically it's a continuation of Nomen Omen, but it's more like a second series in this world. Yeah, I'm not really sure if I'm going to continue Arcadia yet at this point, um, possibly because they're really easy reads, they're graphic novels, and I do think the world is really interesting. We definitely saw some expansion on that. The art style around the world changed a little bit. It fit more with the fantastical elements of the story because it wasn't set necessarily in New York anymore. It was a lot more whimsical and 
fantastical. With that, the art continued to be absolutely jaw-droppingly gorgeous. The color usage, like, got amped up so much more in this one. As far as the plot goes in this one, I do think the story amped up a lot from what I was expecting going into this, just because I thought we were going to mostly be focusing on, like, the final climax. And we are, but there's more to it than that. It's not as simple as I was expecting, which I guess is a positive thing because it was more of a fun ride. I just don't know if I really care about where the story is going to be going after this. There's like a two year time jump right at the end that I just, I didn't understand the necessity in that. And I don't really follow the logic of that happening either. The characters we were following also expanded in this last volume. We weren't just focusing on Becky. We actually see a little bit from like her moms and her friends who she hasn't interacted with since this whole story began. That's pretty cool, but I also just don't really know if I care. Uh, for example, one character of her friend group actually ends up dying, and my reaction was kind of like, oh, that's a shame. I guess the author was trying to showcase the severity in the new situation that has started in this final volume, but I just, I didn't care. <laughs> Another thing that I definitely think could bug a lot of people, personally, I usually like pop culture references in my books. I know that's definitely something that a lot of people have strong feelings on. I tend to like them, but I did it in this one. Every time one was used, it felt like it was really out of place. It took me out of the story. I didn't mind them when this still felt like it was an urban fantasy, but this last volume really leans into the fantastical elements. So it was strange when there was suddenly like a Wizard of Oz reference because it just didn't make sense. I mean, it did make sense. Like I totally followed why Becky made that crack, but like it just seemed like it undercut the seriousness of what was happening. I think by this point they were becoming more of a hindrance than a help to the world that was being established and that reminding us that this is technically set in modern day, but like also not. So not the biggest positive to end this reading vlog on. Technically, I, I don't know if I finished this series. Um, kind of? Not really? <laughs> But at least I got two graphic novels and about half of a novel read. So that's a fair amount to do in 48 hours. All right, y'all. So that is it for today. Thank you so much for coming to my channel. I really appreciate it. Make sure to hit like and subscribe down below. I have all my socials as well as a few ways you can support me linked in the description. I come out in videos on Monday and Friday, but until then, I hope you continue to have a terrific day. Love you. Bye.